Hey everybody, welcome back to Battletech, and uh, we've got a lot of people in for repairs. I think I'm going to have to pass some time here. I've read through as many of the comments as I possibly could. Um, as you guys know, I'm learning this, like, this is my first time ever with a with any type of mech game. Uh, so I'm learning a lot. Um, my request from you guys is that when you're uh, putting in your comments, like, Bite-sized chunks are a little bit easier to learn from. I appreciate the effort that people are putting in with, like, the two-page comments. And I'm trying to go through them as much as I can. But just from, like, a learning thing, it's really difficult to take in every bit of advice. And obviously there's multiple sources and everybody has different ways to play. So, um, ideally if you guys can break it down into smaller, more manageable chunks, but also things that are, um mechanics base like things that I just need to learn strategy and uh, approach and things like that I'm gonna have to figure out like over time there's just you know we've done like three missions so um it's gonna be tough to, to kind of get on that right away um, and the way that I'll learn is by making some mistakes so I hope you guys get where I'm coming from on that that said it's appreciated that you guys are so uh, passionate about the series and like, you can see people that have like tons of experience with like um, with like the tabletop game or Mech Warrior Online, things like that. It's pretty cool to see like the different um, group that it brings, and uh, that's interesting. I like that. I like that. It's really neat. So one of the things that we have to make a decision on is uh, which contract to take. Now, when they sent us this game for release uh, or to cover uh, before release, they had mentioned that it's ideal that we only take uh, one mission. Per uh, territory or whatever that we're in, or one side mission, and then do like the priority missions. Um, so this does take us out of this area, and I think what I'm going to do because there's 17 days of travel time, and we have all of these repairs that are happening, of which I may have uh, not prioritized super well. Uh, but that being said, we still have these repairs that are now in. I am going to pass time, I think, f until about uh, 13 or 14 days, and then uh, we should be able to travel to that other location, take that contract in the other system. All of our mechs should be back by then, and then hopefully if that mission goes really well, we're in a good place for the priority mission. So uh, we are going to pass time here. Most likely we'll hit this first financial report and see what that's all about. Or no. Have we hit a financial report before? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. There's just, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. Thank you guys for being patient too. I know there's probably a lot of, uh, a lot of like forehead moments. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. It's the only way I'm going to learn. Ready to go over financials whenever you are. All right, cool. So we're not in the black. Or I mean, we're not in the red. <laughs> we're not in the red. We're doing, we're doing just fine. Just fine. I can't wait to like... Oh, what's this? Next level expense level options. Um, morale effect. Is this worth? Like, to me, I see 50,000. It's like, meh, it's not that bad, like, over the grand scheme of everything. Let's bump it up by one, see, see if we notice any tangible differences. Uh, let's go down until this is about 17 days, right? Because that's the travel time. Completely out of cash. We're getting low on sea bills, Commander. I suggest keeping a careful eye on our expenses until we can bring in some more income. Worst comes to worst, we could sell off some extra equipment in the local store. That's true, too. Because we did we did actually pick up some of those weapons with the intention of selling them, but until things get dire, like, I don't, I don't know why we'd want to sell. All right. So, 17 days. Let's now take this contract in... Uh, in Detroit, so 17 days to get here. It's a terrorist strike. Um, it smells political, and that makes me nervous. I suggest we go in, take care of the convoy, and get out without too many questions. There is a bonus from the locals if we clean up all the enemy forces, but that's up to you. All right, let's negotiate this. Um, I think, I still think, keeping it like around this range for me makes sense. My understanding is that these are not um, tuned in the way that they will be in the final game. And it's meant as a way to get like more cash or more salvage depending on which one you take compared to how it will be. But that's just based on um, some comments that I've read, so I'm not sure. But either way, I think the more important thing for me is to understand like the core mechanics, the actual gameplay itself. Um, all of this kind of stuff will come over longer term where I'm learning the ins and outs and like what we would need and planning and all that kind of stuff. So. 
But yeah, I'm cer I'm certainly feeling the rookie vibe, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Okay, things are happening. I really like that last mission. Actually, it was cool to just like drop in there and be like, "Okay, now I gotta ha now I gotta handle this." Made a a bunch of I'd say like a handful of of um, mistakes, but as some of you guys pointed out, I was able to pick up on what the mistakes were. Just about gone, Commander. So that was that felt pretty good actually. you submitted is complete beautiful we've arrived to Detroit ready to deploy proceed to the mission uh yes let's rock okay so we do have um we do have this one that I want to bring in instead of the two lighter mechs so we'll bring the shadow hawk or sorry yeah we got the shadow hawk but I'm going to put behemoth in there so this bulwark ability, it's a passive that gains guarded when remaining stationary. So basically what we want to do is we want to put her in there, and we just want to leave her there. Um, which is something I wasn't really doing when we took her out. I was kind of building up evasion. But this is nice because we get that huge damage reduction. So we just want to put her there and just like start spamming, right? Um, yeah, so I think that's good. These other guys are set up the same way I had them previously, which isn't terrible. Uh, there are some ways that I can go in and manipulate armor a little bit better and have, uh, like, more or less armor in the front or the back. Let me actually see if I can do that without taking any time. Uh, without having it hold us back from taking this mission right away. So, what I've, what I've seen are a couple of things. Um, let's go into the Shadowhawk first, if we refit this. One of the things that happens when we use this max armor button is it kind of just puts it like wherever it thinks we should. But then like down here, I can actually manipulate this to say put more armor in the front compared to the rear. And I think that's like one of the bigger things we could do differently. Make sure our front armor is almost maxed. Um, I'm gonna take these down another couple. And again, these ratios, like I have no idea if this is good or bad, you know? And these, like, these fractions here, they do actually show, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know that I can get it exact on 55, but I think this is, like, a better approach to have our front armored stronger. Um, I think that works. Now, if the armor stuff should all be, like, right away. Zero days, zero days, zero days. Cool, let's do it. Logged and no. Cool. Cool. So, I think that's like a decent approach. Those numbers, I don't know. Is that like too little on the back, too much on the front? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out as we go, but, um, you know. Let's knock these down a couple. Especially this center torso area seems to be, you know, pretty important. And the enemies will try to flank us, as we've seen, but generally we can... We can kind of protect ourselves, you know? Um, so again, I don't know if I want to go too light in the back. I'm just going to try to restructure it a little bit so that we have more in the front. Vindicator is coming out for sure. Let's drop this a couple. Same thing here. Same thing here. I could take some off the, the left and right arms or however we want to do it, right? We can do it however we want. Um, I think I'm gonna take, instead of this minigun, I think I'll take the spider out. That minigun, I'm not super pumped on it, but I'm sure in the right scenario it could be good. The nice thing I like about this is we could maybe use that jump jet a little bit more. Um, like look at this, super low armor, makes sense, makes sense. I wonder, what if we remove a couple of these and armor it up a bit more? Like, that's pretty cool. Again, these are lighter mechs. So, who knows if this is good or bad, but... I'm gonna try it. We'll see what happens. We'll focus more on the armor, which... is nice, because, um... 
logged and noted. Makes our guys a little bit more survivable. Okay, so let's make sure we take out that spider when we uh, deploy here. Anyways, that's my thought process. Could be totally off. Who knows? <laughs> Could be totally wrong. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay, so Locust out. Shadowhawk in. Dusa out. Behemoth in. And then... What do we have on Decker here? Evasive movement. This generates extra evasive charge. I like that. I do like that. Compared to, like, the multi-targeting on the light mech. We do less damage anyway. So I think this is actually pretty decent. Let's, let's give her and see what happens. Tactic skill increases the effectiveness of called shots, reduces indirect fire penalties, and increases weapons minimum range. Speed's more important than firepower. Sometimes. Alright, terrorist strikes against our facilities have increased, and our intel says the local pirate organization is bankrolling the terrorists and providing logistical support in the form of small arms, explosives, and medical supplies. We need you to intercept the pirate supply convoy and destroy it before it reaches the terrorists. Nice. Cool thing about this early access for me is, um, apparently, and I only found this out recently, but they only gave it to three people. Um, Cole Carnage, myself, and some other guy. Cole is like the huge Twitch streamer. I don't know who the other guy is, but um, I really appreciate them giving me like this access to this world that I don't know about and giving me the opportunity to learn it. And I think I'm debating whether or not um, for the full release to stick to YouTube or maybe do like some live stuff as well, maybe a separate campaign. I don't know, but if you guys have thoughts on that, um, that'd be cool. Okay, so I'm using this, the ability to do this before release as uh, a lot of learning, so. Let's find and intercept the vehicles before they escape the trap. Then we'll extract at our designated location. Good luck, Commando. Oliviera, out. Okay, y'all. Stay frosty. Oh, I'm frosty. Never been so frosty. Okay, so... That's them. I think. We, that's where they want to leave. Let's just start cruising. Uh, let's definitely get you in the front. Coordinates received. You'd think that would be... Our Whoa. Is within sensor range. Hello. Okay, okay, okay. Let's hit the forest. Aye, aye. Or wait a second. Okay, uh, Decker, I'm actually gonna reserve here. I'm gonna hold him back a sec. Let them move in. Up a blip. Ready for orders. Okay, so we do actually have like a map edge here. Cool. Waiting for orders. We will have eyes on, although a little bit obstructed. So again, you know what? What if we what if we reserve again? Holding for tactical advantage. I'm going to keep reserving here. See if they'll walk into us. Doesn't look like it's happening. Standing by. All right. So let's move up, but we'll keep cover. Got it. I think I'd have to go through the whole of these rounds. Yeah, okay, so they're not going again until phase four. Um, but I can use this opportunity to at least get these guys uh, in so we can react next time. And still keep them out of vision. I won't have any forest cover that isn't able to at least shoot also. The other thing I'm hoping that I kind of evolve over time is just my, like, understanding, not just... Uh, first of all, the, the mech order. classes themselves, um, and saying, like, oh, okay, this is our Vindicator, this is what... Th this is where I know I can position them. Um, I know that I want to keep her, like, a little further back. For the longer range PPC and just the way that we have her built. 
I think I could even focus this a little bit better and like just ditch the small laser. Maybe keep, maybe even ditch the medium laser and just focus on like PPC and LRM. More of like a custom build. Standing by. Um, I think, you know what, I'm just gonna brace him here. Confirmed. Holding. Let's reserve. Decker. Reserving action. Here they come. Oh, so close. But we can now, we can at least move in. Good to go. We can at least move in and get eyes on. Only one sees us right now. And until we actually reveal the mech, I guess we can't get those percentage shots either to show. All right. Actually, these are all pretty good. It's already fairly weak. Even torso area, 5 on 10. Like, I probably want to reserve Precision Strike for... Uh, for when we have, like, an exposed spot. So I, th I, w I think I will save it. Plus, keep our morale, like, boosted a little bit. Firing full complement on enemy. Yeah, I'll take that. We already exposed some structure. And we did an injury. So maybe we hit the head armor. And I guess in that scenario, like, a death from above type of thing is pretty cool. Now, we do have to do something about this convoy. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't, like... Since she's long range, let me see here. If I were to go here, I can fire off only those two. This is much better. Let's take this shot. And I might move uh, the blackjack up to cut off the convoy. I might even swing around our scout to deal with the vehicles too. Yeah, see, so the head's exposed, which is amazing. And if we take out the head, I think we take out the mech. So I might go, I might target this. 2%, I guess, smaller body part. All right, let's just take the regular shot then. Special delivery. Oh, big whiff. Big whiff. I don't know what that is. Good to go. Okay, Decker, I'm gonna just start dashing you back here. On it. Make sure we're faced forward. And we'll just brace. I don't wanna send him in against like the to maybe do a death from above against four vehicles and that other mech. Man, I really wish we could customize our guys. Oh, that would be so sick. I don't understand the technical limitations for doing so, but it's all good. So now with her, we kind of want to just keep her steady. Like, just don't even move her. Uh, because of that bulwark ability. So I'm going to keep her here. These vehicles getting eyes on because of this guy and firing over that ridge, Showing that's dirty. It's very dirty. Orders? Acknowledged. I probably could have been jumping this guy too. I know we built up more heat, but... Okay, let's see if the other mech comes in here. Oh, he's taking high ground. Smart. We got lucky that that particle cannon didn't get through. I feel fairly confident we can take out this Locust on the next turn. Light damage. Holding firm. Okay, cool. Orders. Now, um... I hear ya. 
We might be able to pick this up. He's fairly exposed. If we precision strike... I'm guessing the head is always difficult to hit. I'm guessing it's just like that. But man, if we just hammer down this midsection, like, I feel like this is decent. And we can hit with all of these, potentially. Because he doesn't have a lot of armor there, and I probably should have just trusted my gut the first time. Look at that. Holy moly. That's what I'm talking about. I like it. I think I should have done that earlier. Target that midsection that had, like, barely any armor. All right. What's up, boss? Now, this guy, let's take a look at him. Head armor, obviously relatively low. Can I... Can't quite get there. We can just fire on this guy, and we've got Bulwark. Oh, we have sensors impaired? Why is that? Oh, is that because... No, I'm not sure why... What's causing that, actually? Alright, let's just... Let's just battle it out with him. We have Bulwark. He doesn't. I don't think. Alright, let's get in here. I don't have any forest cover, unfortunately. Is that other mech gonna deal- is he gonna be a problem? He might be. But if he wants to spread his damage between the two of us, I think I'm okay with it. And we're just gonna start hammering this. Now, they only have- vehicles only have this one structure piece, right? So, no matter what, they- we only have 11 structure to chew through, I think. Um... So, if we chew through this left side, it's the armor that really is a problem. I'm gonna just fire everything at this one guy for now. Primary target damage. Concentrate your fire and bring it down. Damn it. And these little guys are capable of dishing out the damage I've seen. <laughs> like, like, a lot. So I think in the last mission, where we had a couple of, uh, three vehicles, I think, and we had uh, that big mech, I kept focusing down that mech, but these guys were capable of dealing way more offensive power, and it might have been better to prioritize them. What's right. up, boss? Oh, I can jump on these two. Well, as well. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Let's see what you got. Oh, so sick. Oh, that's so cool. We're in a bit of an exposed spot, but you know what? It's worth the fun for me. It's worth the fun. And they take that a little bit of that leg damage, so I got to be careful with that. But Oh, be cool, buddy. Be cool. We're cool. Unsteady is all. Okay, we don't have any eyes on down here now, unfortunately. However, I can jump onto this guy. Attacker incurs leg damage and stability. Now, is it leg armor or is it straight leg damage? I'm about to find out. I think... Holy frick, that's good. Got the knockdown too. That's massive. I'll check her next time to see what happened there with her legs. But now I just basically want to run at these at these vehicles. He's got so much evasion, that's dope. 
See, because he took a little bit of damage, and I think that happened from the death from above. I think. Good to go. All right, so back here, I think I'm only going to have uh, the long-range missiles. Yeah, 70%, 70. Let me see, do I get a, a higher benefit from being back here? Nah, not really. And by benefit, I meant, like, to percentage to hit. There's probably, like, a sweet spot. Oh, I'm sure there is. All right, we could go on him, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to focus down these vehicles. This guy's already weaker. And it's totally exposed to the side we're shooting on. Let's give him hell. Actually, can I precision strike this over a hill? Is that overkill? I mean, our morale's up there. So I think we just focus here. Boom! Sick. That might, I might not even need to do that, but it sure Bye -bye. feels good. Sure feels good. I'm okay with... I just want to feel good, you know what I mean? I'm just feeling it. Feeling it out. Nobody hits Decker. Nobody. That Except for when you do. My armor. Okay, our turn. I think it's just time for a little stompy stomp here. Okay, let me take a look at these guys. So he's got the short-range missile and long-range missile. Uh, this guy has the AC-5 and the minigun. What am I more worried about? Well, that's a tough call. For me. Because I, to I don't totally understand them. The long-range missile, 10, is super strong, I think, though. So I think I'm just going to focus on doing this. Now, you notice that there's these little attack points. I think that's how I can choose which... Yeah, for sure. That's how I can choose which way I'm going to be facing at the end of it. Sick. Sick. Like that. Good bite. Enemy unit destroyed. All right, and then Enemy Dex. Lie. Stomp him. Can I? Uh... So here, like, I can't choose these sides, I guess. And if I look at his legs, uh, see how his legs are damaged. So maybe it does do armor first. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Engaging. Oh! I meet you at the oh. LZ. It's so good. It's so good. All right, he's standing up. Not for long, let me tell you. He's having a bad day, this guard. Oh, and he whiffed the shot. He whiffed it. What's up, boss? Behemoth, you want this or what? Waiting on you, Commander. I can't. I can't even see him. So this might just have to be a punch. Eighty-five in the back. He still has some armor there. But, you know what? I'm going to go for it. On my way. She's got fists, too, which I think is better. Just crushed. So now, is that because the spot that she hit him was in the back, it was enough to remove the armor and do the internal structure damage on the core? Mission successful. Dope. So we don't even have to get to the ex extraction if we finish off the guards. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, that's that's so f it's like it's so fun, man. I love this when I like when the things are starting to click. Ah, okay, I feel like our on battle stuff is getting is getting better. Uh, I did hurt those legs unnecessarily by doing that jump. Shouldn't have done that, but All right, cool. We'll take it. Yeah, see, like, his legs? Bit of a problem. But we have the other light mech to take the spot of this one, if we want. Now, 
One thing I need to figure out is, are there inherent differences between, like, so this spider... Oh, we'll talk about this in a second. All right. So, um, I understand that we can get some of this salvage, um, to, like, put together our own mech type. And that's really cool and everything. Um, but I think I'm still going to go for the cash right now. And maybe if I start going up in salvage agreements to say, like, where I can pick one or, or where I can pick two or three pieces, then that's good because I can guarantee at least I can get, you know, two chunks of this or that or the other thing, right? Um, the PPC is worth a lot, and it's a lot of damage. Um, I wonder if you can put two PPCs on one mech? That might be a lot of heat, though. Like, when I look at this, I see heat of 40. To me, that doesn't mean anything right now. You know what I mean? It, does, just, it just doesn't mean anything. But let me take the PPC. I feel like that's going to be the most costly. 180 compared to 150. And then ammo. Nice. Okay, cool. So we did get some mech salvage here. Um, for the locust. And then some random stuff. Cool. Cool. Destroying it at battle mech's head or legs removes it from combat and increases the amount of partial mech salvage. Oh! Okay. So if we want salvage, we prioritize that. Cool. Super cool. Uh, sorry, mech bay. Welcome to the grease pit, Commander. What's up, Yang? Okay. So. Let's, uh, repair all. And, again, like, his legs are pretty underarmored. This is a light mech class anyway, so it's kind of tough to be, like, you know. Uh, if I look at max armor here, it's going to change these all back to stock. But, um, I think that might be okay, learning from that leg scenario. Whereas, like, look at my arms, okay? So, yeah, they might be exposed as flanks, but I'd much rather put that, that armor into, um my torso area, which is going to be, like, front-facing all the time. You know? Um, so I think, like, a mixture like this might be a bit better. I could probably drop these slightly at the expense of refitting more into the center. How long is it going to take? Four days. Not bad. Not bad. And we have to travel back, right? At our cost, unfortunately. Efficiency-wise, yeah, it would have been better to, like, stay there. Either way. Just because it's, like, pre-release, I want to explore as much as I possibly can. Alright, now the Locust. Let's go in here and consider refitting some of the armor like we've done on the others. Uh, let's drop the legs slightly. Pop those in here. Let's drop the arms slightly. Pop those in here. And I'm sure... I fully believe that there are great reasons to keep this armor maxed out. Um, I'm just trying to experiment and see, like, the center torso area is obviously crucial. Um, so, yeah. Now, a PPC is not going to fit on this mech, right? Because it's too heavy, I think. I think that's the deal. But if I go back to, I'll like, um, you know is it our Vindicator? Step. It is our Vindicator. Uh, so I could put a PPC here. What if I got rid of this small laser? Okay. I'm just gonna experiment and see what happens. This is probably gonna be overweight. Yeah. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, our heat efficiency also drops significantly. Significantly. But, um, what if I drop the laser? It does 10 heat, 25 damage. I could, um, I could forego jump jets on this one. Heat efficiency is already up. I could probably, the way that I look at this is like, okay, we have this, this unit who's going to be super long range with the PPC and the long range missile five. Um, the armor probably is less important on this mech. You know what I'm saying? 
Remove the damage from the back, or the armor from the back, quite a bit more. This is really aggressive and probably overkill and probably not good in the long run. But basically what I'm trying to figure out is, do I have enough um, in heat sinks to, like, offset the efficiency? You know, at least so it's dropped not so much. And then still be able to have armor. And be, like, more of, like, our glass cannon long range that most people aren't going to be able to get to anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm close, but I, I do have to drop a significant amount more armor. And this is probably crazy. So if you guys think that this is too crazy, I I'm sure it is. I'm actually positive that this is too crazy. You know? But if we play it right, then we can make it work. I just don't know if I can get down that low. I can maybe ditch one of the heat sinks. I don't think that came off. We're close. I could even ditch the jump jets, maybe. Um, it's really tight. It's really tight. But if we go glass cannon, that's what happens. So this is basically what I would have to do. Get I'm really close here. So something like that. Like, I could pull that off, maybe. And hoping that we're far enough back, as long as we're not targeting their long range, maybe we're okay. You know? But this is probably too aggressive. But the damage output would be massive. Right? Having two PPCs? Might be kind of cool. Might be kind of cool to try this. And I think I will, just for, like, my own sense of learning. So it's going to take 10 days to install that other firearm. It's going to take 17 days to travel back anyway. So, like, I'm going to give her give her a shot. Get it in the schedule. Now, do I... I don't think I have to come back in here if we're not changing any of these guys. They didn't take any structure damage, so they're all repaired. They're, they're happy. Everyone else is good, I think. All right. Okay, so now if we take this contract... See, look at all these out here. Oh, it does include travel. Well, isn't that lovely? Didn't say that before because we're already, already in Bellerophon. But uh, I think we take this now. And I'll follow the advice of the of uh, Hairbrain Schemes, where I take only the one side mission in each area. Um, I think that's what we'll do. We'll have everything done by then. We'll have another financial report. Which I guess is okay. We are going to be... I think this month we probably lost money. Because we only took that one contract. I've got the financial report. Yeah, so... I, we definitely lost money that month. Not great. Let's go down to, like, normal morale here. Until we start bankrolling, cruising a little bit more. Our nest egg is just about gone. And we ha we do have those weapons that we can sell too. Like, uh, let's actually check the store. So I go in here to sell. Um, I think it's like this laser. See how it's got a value of one hundred forty thousand. I understand that it probably depends on where we're selling things um, and what our reputation is and things like that. If you guys can share additional information on that, I'd love to hear it. Where's like some of the good places to sell and not to sell? Um, LRM 10's worth 150,000. We get 18,000 in this location. That seems like not that great. But if things are dire, then that's what we would do, I guess. Let's finish up our travels. Beautiful. 
Oh, one thing I should check is, um, I should check pilot XP as well. I don't know if it notifies us. Uh, don't deploy just yet. I don't know if it notifies us of, uh, when we have upgrades available. But, like, we're sitting on 900 XP here. Now, the way I understand this again, we get these three slots only to choose from, like, these kind of eight, if I'm not mistaken. If you guys could clarify that for me, that would be great. We have 400 XP here. Glitch is 1100, which isn't bad. Um, sensor lock. Select a target within sensor range to reveal it until the end of the current round and remove two of its evasive charges. I'm trying to think of, like, the best way to use that. Reveal it until the end of the current round and remove its two evasive charges. So, like... Is that when we can see, we know an enemy's coming, but we don't know exactly what it is? Can we sensor lock on something like that? I'm going to save the XP anyways, but if somebody could explain, like, give me a, an example scenario of how I would use that. That would be really, Waiting really helpful. And then these guys, I like the piloting skill because I'm kind of starting to see these guys as not just scouts, but also, like, really good against vehicles because they're going to deal that damage output anyways. Tactics-wise, sensor lock again, something I could grab right now. Which seems like it's probably pretty good on a scout, based on my understanding of it, but... You. Yeah. And then... If I'm going with this, those... Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna hold this one too. Because there's probably better... And one of the things that I'll come to learn over time is like, okay... So, she is... Um, she is built out this certain way, and that works better with this type of mech or whatever, whatever. Um, and once I learn those combinations, that's going to be... Uh, once I get those aha moments, it's going to feel so good. All right, anyways, I think we'll break here. When I come back, uh, we're going to take this main mission, and hopefully it goes well. But uh, thanks again, everybody. I hope you're having a good time. I am, and we'll see you in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.